The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi folks, this will be one of our first full weeks in a while. There's no Monday holiday. We're here Monday. It's the 8th of uh, January and we're looking at the Dow down 140. Uh, yeah, have a look at this. So it's down 140, but Boeing is quite a bit of but 8% down, down 21 at 20, uh, 227. Uh, you know, Boeing, wow. Some of the issues that Boeing has had, um, you you just have to wonder: is this is this something that's been going on, and it is part of? I'm not going to say recklessness because that would be wrong, but it's it, a little bit of carelessness. You just don't know, and you'll find out in a little while. But really, um, as everything, look, Boeing goes from under 180. Uh, end of October to almost 270 straight up. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks with a tiny, tiny little doji candle. Uh, what is it? Four weeks ago, three weeks ago, another doji candle. A uh, hint that's at silent doji in the Chapman methodology. Red candle, almost like a on Friday, it was almost like a. Um, Chapman Wave Roman, red Roman candle, <clears throat> and then whoosh, it comes down like this. Um, it's it's a problem. It's a real problem. But um, we'll find out in the fullness of time exactly what it is. So what I wanted to do is to show you, look, let's just do this again. The Dow <clears throat> has pulled back. It's down 154. I've been using this as kind of a benchmark. Let me just go here to the uh, Dow, INDU, there it is. Look, that nine period moving average has started to turn down. Yes, we got an on-balance volume turnaround, but then it made a higher high. That's a little unusual in this particular pattern, but what I had said before, because of the strength, even though we're short the Dow, with the strength of the, uh, the nine period over the 14 period, back on that high of the 27th or 28th of, here we go, a December right there, 28th of December. Um, and then a, a Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal, meaning that there was just a fractional lower high, the following bar with a, usually a doji candle. And then there was a pullback. It could, I said, are we here? That's like the August 1st. But I'd also said, I can't go. I can't go aggressively short because there is internal strength that I haven't yet seen dissipate. And you can see even now, with the the Boeing news, and of course there's some other Dow stocks pulling back. But you can see that that nine period moving average is reluctant to cross negative, and that means we could we could meander across sideways until something happens, and there's an acceleration below the 14 period moving average and the daily chart of the Dow. And that takes you, that takes that green line below the 14 period moving average. And that makes the nine period moving average pink negative. We haven't got there yet. So it's a work in progress. Um, what we're looking at here is that I put the question mark over there. And that's what we're still, this is a work in progress, as I say. However, let's just go to the S&P. The S&P had a slightly different pattern. The tiniest little doji candle you can get off the spectacular move. I mean, 24% gain in 2023. Um, and then it makes this tiny little doji candle and it pulls back. And that just says that the technicals here are starting to deteriorate. But once again, it's a work in progress because buying keeps coming in. And that just says maybe we're in for a shallow retracement before we get another break to the upside. I don't, I don't want to go there just yet for a couple of reasons. But mo most importantly, let's look at the QQQ. The QQQ actually flipped on Friday at the close. The nine period moving average turned negative. Today it's up 4.27, up 1% at 
once again, this is a work in progress. On balance volumes, put, turned down sharply. It made a really, um, the day before the high, it um, started turning down. And you've got, as I say, the 914 here. Now, if you see it in a different perspective, all of them, look, the Dow weekly chart, this is the first week that there's a chance, if it doesn't go above 37,790, actually, I have to give it to the penny, because if it goes by one penny to a higher high, uh, 37,790.08. If it goes to 0 0.09 this week, it extends leg, <laughs> it extends leg A in the weekly chart. Isn't that incredible? But all the technicals are very strong. So I'm suggesting to you that there's a pullback here. I I don't think this is an F. This is an A with a this is in a buy mode, and there should be pullbacks. And at this point, 36,000. I say 6.30 is the nine-period moving average. I'm not sure yet, but we're going to break that on this pullback, this little digestive phase. All right, so I needed to go now quickly because we've got questions that have come in over the weekend, etc. I want to get to them, and uh, I'll see if there are any questions in the den and in Tiger YouTube. But just in the meantime, say the S&P is up 16 and 47.30. After what we've seen, after this digestive phase, um, up 23 to 26, I'd say that is really good action. This is more just a bounce. And you can see these 914 nine pair. Well, let me just put it over here. You can see the 914 in the S&P is a little cluster formation. Everything's kind of conglomerated right around this 47, 13, 16 area. So I'm watching that closely. And you can see that the um, 914, uh, in, uh, in the wicker picture, when I've got a just thick gray line for the S&P, there's a daily chart, um, and you can see that it's going to have to do a lot of work uh, to to do two things. One is to pull back to go pink for the nine period moving average to go pink, and probably have to go to 40, 46, mm, I'd say 88, and for it to actually make a make a uh, a bounce that deflects the price back up again, probably 47, as I say, 26 up in that area, will say, hey, watch this. I'm not through, I'm not pulling back very much at all. But I just need to go on here uh, to show you QQQ monthly chart is in leg B. Uh, this is a good sign. It means that you can't get to a peak D until at least four months. The other aspect that we've got to look at here is the little tiny doji candle in the weekly chart. But wow, the price is already holding stochastics at 90%. So this is, as I say, a digestive phase. The depth of it will be, um, for me, will be meted out in terms of directional move based on the width between the 9 and 14 if it expands, how it expands, and how quickly it expands. That's going to tell me. But I, I, I'm suspicious of any bounce here because I think that, remember, oh, I, I'll do this at the break. If I remember, I'll try to do it. So IWM, IWM is up uh, 47 cents. Now let's go to ARKK because it kind of gives me a much bigger picture. ARKK is barely up. It's up 22 cents at 49.12. So together with the Russell 2000, the ARK Innovation of all those Kathy Wood heavies that she was buying all the way down. Um, yes, she's had a decent bounce from 33 to 54 fabulous bounce, but I'm I'm suspecting this is giving us a clue. Not all is well there. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Just to sum up, yeah, ARKK has not, the nine period moving average just flipping negative on Friday and today. Um, but I do believe it's building a base for a move higher. But where the support is, we'll know within a few days. But at this particular point, uh, I don't think it's going to fill the gap just yet that it had five days ago. Let's just go on. I wanted to show you something that I, I think is quite important. Look, gold <clears throat> coming back from the low of the day, which is at 20, 2022, is now at 2036, had a high of 2053. This is just in a trading range. So it really depends on your selectivity of the actual gold or silver stocks in this particular instance. Why? Because if you look at the GDX, there we go, the GDX, that's the gold miners, that 200 period moving average, I mean, for months has been like glue. It just keeps, no matter whether it goes up or down, it keeps coming back. And what is the price of that right now, 22.77? What's the price of the GDX? Down seven cents at 29.70. And that's just telling me that there isn't the sustained upside move that you would expect. You'll only get that if it starts trading, if the GDX is trading in the next, any day in the next two weeks, actually trading for two for a whole session above, I would put it at 3260. But if it goes two sessions above 3260, finally, I think you're breaking out to the upside. That'll start a leg D in the weekly chart, but that'll be a very good sign. Meantime, it's just stuck, and, and the GDX has a very, well, I can't say strong support because if it actually takes a dive, dive and goes under 2860, mm, that's not very good. I just think it's kind of stuck here. If you look at silver, SLV, that's the silver, the ETF or the silver trust, um, is making the dreaded H pattern. Uh, had a pullback from just about 22, uh, 23.40s. Uh, Announced at 2118. Again, the 200 period moving average has been like a magnet. 
And look at this for the weekly chart. It just keeps testing the lows, coming down 2050, 2051 is the 200-period uh, moving average at this particular point. And the weekly chart says, hey, just sideways. If you put high-grade copper into the package of all these uh, metals, <clears throat> uh, the, the peak D that was made about uh, two and a half weeks ago from the 3.90s, now it's a 3.80. It's still stuck. There's the 200-period moving average. Almost all these these commodities that I'm talking about are in this 200-period moving average magnet. They're not breaking away. They're not breaking down, but they're not holding upside uh, pops. Uh, and uh, let's see, what was that? Yeah, we'll get there in a moment, uh, Steve. I want to look at uh, the SMHs because we are still short the SMHs, had nice gains, but we'll see what happens next. Now, what's really important about um, these commodities is, look, wheat, just wheat. Look at that sharp move down today, down 22, uh, over 22 points at 593 and a half. Look at the soybeans, sharply down, making a, lower, a yearly lower low um, after PD monthly. Look at corn. Now, I thought that we had a particular uh, ET, ET uh, well, fund that we, were, we bought the other day thinking there was just a chance that we could see between some balancing crude oil and natural gas and maybe some of the commodities, just a little bit of um, upside nuance. But I made the stuff real tight. We're, we're done. That was just a chance to do that, and it didn't work. So we're done there. Look at the, uh, uh, this is sugar, SB. Just trying to come off a low, but what a move down from the 28s down to 20. Now it's at 21.53. Oh, and a peak D in the monthly chart. So those, you would think that with all these commodities really taking a dive, that the inflation rate decline would in impact the um, Fed's desire of 2% inflation. I, I think we're going to get there. I think we're going to get there. There's no question about it. You know, when you're looking at these commodities. However, we've also got to look at this. This is dollar HGX, and what is that? That is the um, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, which months and months ago I said has got a Chapman wave overlapping wave and a Chapman wave cup and ladle pattern that should go to a leg D. We were right here. I think we just snuck above 534. And we got to the 538.40 level, which was a break to a new all-time high. And that was C, and then a pullback sharply. And I said, nope, we should still go to a D. Well, we've got that leg D in the monthly chart. If it, in all of January, <clears throat> it doesn't break above, even by one penny, 667.06. It's a 649.37 right now, up 8.21, up 1.26. This is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. If it takes that high out by 667.06 by one penny to 07, that extends the leg D in the monthly. I'm watching this, and it's very really interesting because if you look at the TLT, the TLT is pulled back sharply where? To the 200-period moving average. I mean, what a nice technique to use here. 200-period moving average, holding now, and that means that the TNX.X, let's go there, that is the yield has made a leg B, a gray leg B, because the stochastic uh, is not strong enough to give it a buy mode. And let's just go to this as a B, a gray B. I'm not going to have a chance. I'm not going to put it in as a gray just yet. Um, and that just says that the yields, uh, let's say, look, the yields have been coming down sharply and over the last one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, eight sessions, had a very strong, in relation to what it normally does, a strong up move. But nothing big, nothing sensational. So that's just saying, within the context of yields being effective in the general market, uh, yes, it did for the last five days. It's kind of the way the market has pulled back, and yet it's moving. Um, it's moving down today at 40.10, 4.010. Now let's also look at the dollar, the XY. The dollar is stalling here, down 10. Ticks at 102.32, just same sort of thing. Just had a nice rally and stalled. And now we want to look at the EUR, USD, JPY. Oh, EUR, USD, that's the euro dollar currency pair. Here it is. 
little bit of a bounce right on the, uh, it's still a green nine period moving average. Uh, it's up, oh, what is it up? It's up 0 0.002 and uh, at 1.096. And if you look at the USD, JPY, big pullback from Friday's high at, at you know, just under 146. And here we are at 144.14. And you can see this weekly chart, it's a real struggle for that pink to turn green. Uh, it's going to really have to move to the 140. Well, I'd say 147. It's the only way you could do that. So here we are. Um, SMHs, I was asked about that. Here we go. SMH, big move up today. 2.8%, 2.6%, up 4.35 at 170.43. All-time high is 176.75. Uh, as we were short, we're still short via uh, uh, an aggressive, very small position in the SOXS. Um, yeah, I'm watching this very close because so far the move down from 176 to the 164s is on CPS. That is the cheapest move we've had in the file. But think about today is almost the I'll be back in a moment. How's the depth of balance down 108 minutes? Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, we've just gone to another leg, D. 
in the, uh, remember in Chapway methodology, you're always looking for those leg Ds. That's where other things can happen. So you've got D in the one-minute chart. You've got, on the E-mini, you've got leg E in the five-minute chart. And actually a leg F, this even could be an a alternate count. The buying has been coming in, and now the Dow is only down 88, even with Boeing. This is important. Uh, there we go. So I wanted to show you. Uh, so this is FXI. This is the iShares China Large Cap ETF, uh, making um, a year. This on uh, it's a, a yearly. Hasn't made a yearly low yet, but that low from 20. Let me just show you the price right here. FXI is the iShares China Large Cap ETF, uh, in October. Yep, October of 2022, 20.87 was the low. Had a pretty decent rally up to the uh, 33 level in January. And then it took a dive by going a uh, sharp move down the very next in February. And then the, the nine period moving average, which has been pink ever since it was up at, um, since September of 2021, up in the 42 area, um, has remained pink and it deflected lower, even though it looked like it was going to try to turn positive. And back in, I think it was March, was it? Yeah, back in March, then it went all the way to uh, actually August. It went green above the 14 period moving average, and that was it. And now it's down 46 cents at 22.77, a new um, many monthly low, or a yearly low, actually. Um, yes, yeah, so what we're looking at here is this is that H pattern. I, I'm not sure it's going to stop. 21 to 20 is really important support on FXI. Uh, I'm not sure what the question was, but anyway, I've got that in. Um, yeah, so let me just do this. NVIDIA having a really strong move today. It's up 4.5%. It's up $22. You know, Boeing's down $22. This is up $22. This is at 20 at 513.17. There was a, a peak C1, C2. Now it's gone to a leg D, a new high, and in fact, it's in just, it isn't just a new high. It is a new all-time high. So it's going to be very important to be monitoring this. over This particular week is really important. Why? Is it possible that the Dow extends this leg D to the upside? The S&P and the, and the QQQs are all, and the XLK, which is, and the SMHs are all helped because of NVIDIA making a new all-time high. Is this a new... F is this a leg F for a brand you see in the weekly chart? Well, we don't have to do anything yet. I'm calling it F for now, just as an extension. The MACD hasn't turned up. Stochastics very good at 89%. On balance volume is has pulled back from being a little bit overbought. And you've got yourself a leg C. Hmm, interesting in the monthly chart. Very bullish. But that doesn't mean to say that the short term everything's over for the SMHs in terms of the digestive phase, because look at this. Applied materials, mm -mm. a little bit of a bounce, up three at 152. Yes, it's up 2%, but look where it's come from. And look at uh, well, let me, advanced micro devices, AMD, AMD, AMD. Uh, yeah, this is, all, this is now a leg D just by a fraction. Oh, MD, that's MD. MD is uh, pediatrics medical group. Very nice action. It showed up. What a coincidence. It showed up. This morning as a screamer, I almost put it in as a, as a potential buy, but we went somewhere else. Um, I, we're doing a lot of buying, very little shorting, actually, in this particular phase. So let's do this again. AMD. AMD is uh, advanced micro devices. That's a good move, up 3.8% at 143.88. I'm watching these very closely. I've called this a leg a, a peak A in the weekly chart. It could be an alternate account. The technicals are just so strong. And the short term, yes, it had a, pre a pretty decent pullback. So it's a very mixed picture. If you look at Marvell, uh, this is not Marvell, the comics, this is Marvell Tech, Semis, Data Center, Auto, 5G Communications, the works. A very nice recovery high. <clears throat> oh, is this now a G or is it a brand new A? Well, we don't have to make a decision just yet. I'll call it a G for now because there's, not, there's nothing technically. Uh, yeah, to say that it's a brand new A, it's more likely a G, but it's A, B, C, leg C in the weekly chart. Yeah, these semi, there's just absolutely no question. The semis today 
um, not just a relief rally. It looks to me, especially with NVIDIA at a new high, that this is actually some new buying. So we're going to really watch this closely to see what happens by, today's only Monday, by Wednesday into Thursday. Do we start to see a turnaround here? I'm, let me just do this one more time. <clears throat> NVIDIA, because I do not want to rule out that it was just a brief digestive phase. And now we're on to a uh, new highs. Oh, that's right. So the low is 392.30 in NVIDIA on October the 31st. Screams up to 505.48 on the 20th of November. Pulls back quite sharply. Has this channel pattern that says if you break to the upside, it's almost like a falling axe. You could have a very strong move to the upside, maybe even to test the, re the left side high, which it did. 505.48. It goes to 5. I think it was 506 actually. Oh, no, 504.31. So that was a peak C from this B right here. So it went to peak C1, C2, all underneath that previous B, and now it's in leg D. So, and you've got your channel wave inside track. Repellent zone is just snuck above it. I cannot dismiss this as being really important and a potential to say after the pullback that we've seen, which was more time than price, now going to an all-time high NVIDIA Corporation, which has all the products needed in the chip area, and I think advanced micro, uh, advi advanced micro devices and Intel have chips that are in demand in the other areas. And Intel is up $1.38, up almost 3% at 48.27, but not a great looking chart on the short term. So I'm watching this really closely. Uh, it could be an oversold bounce as we're still digesting. That's my impression. My impression is that we will still go sideways to slightly down in the semis at this particular point over the next uh, week. Could be totally wrong about that. That's just my impression from the technical analysis that I've done. So we're watching this very closely. Let me tell you where's a breakout. If the SMHs trading at 170.64, Start to fill this gap below 174.50. Let me give you the exact price. The 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 low of the 29th was 173.67, and the high of the very next session was 172.35. So, oops, no, yes, right. So that that really, if it fills that, that is very good action, and that just is ho ho ho. Um, They've digested their gains, and the weekly charts want to just move on. That's all it is. So I'm using the SMHs um, together with those three stocks that are four stocks that I mentioned in the semiconductor index. It's kind of the go-to place that I always look at to see is there a is there weakness or is this spread. I'll be back. Dow's down, uh, down 80. Down now it's only down. Yes, it's ah, oh, it's much the sincere. Yes. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We're back and we're looking at uh, the E mini and making a little double top. Yeah, this is a peak E in the day in the one minute chart. Leg E went to a peak E in the uh, five minute chart. A, it just needs a fraction higher and it goes to an F. But that's where it is right now. And this is a leg F in the uh, 10 minute chart. Interesting. So let me just uh, finish up here because uh, questions came in. So the question came in the IYT. So Last week, we were looking at the IYT, the iShares, Dow Jones, Transportation, Average, Industrial Fund. Uh, it's not industrials if uh, if it's the Dow, which is called the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is an industrial in the sense that it is um, iShares, Dow Jones, Transportation, Average, Industri Index Fund. I'm sorry, I meant Index Fund. This is uh, a very important benchmark for what we're looking at here because this is the transports. And the transports, look, the all-time high was up in the 282 area back in May of 2021. They double-topped in about that area, pulled back very sharply under 200. Then it ran up to the 260 area, pulls back sharply to the two uh, tens, and now it's back again. So this choppiness, you can't see it in the weekly chart because this has gone straight up for the last four weeks. Has been under the last high, which was underneath the previous high. Let me just do this here. That was a peak D back in uh, 267.15. Now, 267.85, week of the 4th of August. And then 266.74, um, this is the week of uh, December the 15th. And since then, it's been lower than that but still holding pretty well. And that just says to me that if you're looking at the general market, to get the transports doing this well, you just cannot dismiss it. So this is kind of confirmation that the bigger picture so far is holding much, much better than one would anticipate um, with the transportations doing what they're doing right now. So within that context, question came up about, where was it? Uh, was it in the, the YouTube? Yeah, XLE. So the energy sector um, has been very weak. It did rally, it went to a peak A, B, C, D, E in the daily chart just recently. That was only an A in the weekly. But at 82.63, down 2.05, this is just saying that it's not in demand right now, XLE, the energy sector, 
but in the, week, the monthly chart just says, hey, we're only in a rectangle formation. You're not breaking down. And that's the point I wanted to make. It's like gold. Gold's not breaking down, but it's not acting strong. So the XLE, not breaking down yet, but acting strong. If the XLE closes under 80, that's the real problem. And here it is at 82.51. Let me just get this here, a little, a little ping in my ear. Uh, whoops. Ah, oh, we've got Garo in Newport Beach. Garo, how are you? Very good. Happy New Year to you, sir. And a very happy New Year to you, yes. You wanted to yes, look sir. at... Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, yes, sir. Here, I have a, a question regarding CCCC. Yes. Uh, and I've been, tra I've been trading this for a while. I usually don't trade uh, cheap stocks, but right. this is very profitable to me. And it moves very good. The bow volume is very good. I buy three, four thousand shares at each time, going long or short. Uh, looking at the daily chart and weekly chart, the daily chart is to, to me it looks very good, very promising. And uh, except the weekly chart, if you look at the weekly chart, you see that everything is fine. The five day cross, twenty one day, and the fifty day, <clears throat> but still twenty one day has not crossed the 50-day on a weekly chart. So, uh, do, do you think? Yeah, do you think this will this will go up to ten dollars from here in time, or uh, it's going to curve down from from this point? So, first we're looking at CCCC. I don't think I've ever followed this, and it's called C something therapeutics C4. Therapeutics. When they put a number in the, to the title of the uh, company, I'm always a, <laughs> always get a little nervous about that. Anyway, it's called C4 Therapeutics. So this is in the biotech area. And if you look at the chart, I would have said to you, "Gosh, this looks like a biotech stock." <laughs> yeah, because it has this incredible volatility. Volatility meaning it goes down very sharply. Yes. So yes. the pattern that I'm looking at. Look at your weekly chart. You see this candle right here. Uh, this is the candle of the 15th of December has a high, well, it has a low of 116. You would not believe me if I said to you that the same week it had a high of $8.37. That's Biotech. But what's really yeah. important, that candle fits all the criteria of my Chapman Wave inverted green Roman candle. So my rule of thumb is if it's able to trade, and I have to get this now exact because it's doing this as we're speaking. If it's able to trade in a shorter time frame, so I have to make that in this particular instance because it's a biotech, I'm going to make it all day. If all day it's be able to close above eight, uh, sorry, 645, and right now it's trading at 645, um, if it's able to close above that, close that day above that level, then there's a really good chance that it's going to work its way within two bars. This happens to be a weekly chart, so it's a two bar, it means two weeks. If it can close above that 645 level, it should try to work its way towards the high, it doesn't say it's going to get there, but towards the high of 837. That's a 20%, that's a 30% gain. So I have to go to the daily chart. You asked me about the weekly, I need to go to the daily because the daily, normally in a pattern like this, I grab the outer bars and I draw a big, a large rectangle. That rectangle says, if this particular chart that you're looking at is able, after this big flagpole that it went up and then pulled back from, if it's able to go successively to higher highs and preferably higher lows, it should go peak A, peak B, peak C, and even a peak D, just under, right on, or just above the previous high. So you need to see, and now I need time. I don't want to take too long. So within by Wednesday, it should go above 6.84, and it's trading at 6.43 right now. 6.84, it doesn't have to close above it. it. I prefer if it closed above it, and I'm sure you would as well, but it needs to get to that level. Uh, that's number one. Number two, 
is if in the neck, and these, it's a biotech, so it can move very quickly, as you've seen at any point. Yes. If it closes yes. under the bar of the 2nd of January, which is 526, it just goes sideways. And then you've got to look for the arch formation saying that it's going to come down and test the 420s. Um, I don't know if I'm uh, helping you, but that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Uh, thank so, you, sir. I appreciate it for listening to me. Thank you. Have a nice thank day. Thank you for calling. Good luck with this one. Thank you. Uh, so, folks, I'm going to write that down. I haven't watched um, CCCC ever. This is the first time. Oh, I forgot to look down at this. Shoes. The variety of shoes. Got a pair of shoes the other day. I'm at the shoe store. I'm actually many shoe stores. I go to one particular shoe store. I cannot believe the variety. This is like glassware. Um, I'll think about that. That's, this is like the nice study, right? I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, right, folks. So we've got to watch the close today. It's really important. Yes, the SMHs have done extremely well. The videos do well. This is that part of the rotation that I'm talking about in terms of uh, just a digestive phase. I'm not looking for anything huge to the downside, but I am expecting this dis digestive phase to continue. Look, here's the one-minute chart. Follow the green line. Look, the green line has been green since, whoa, since this is unbelievable. And this is a one-minute chart, but since 9-11 this morning, uh, Eastern Time, at 7.47.37, the one-minute chart has remained green. Unbelievable how beautiful a technique that is. And here we are at 47.59, <clears throat> 20 points higher. And this is the one-minute chart. The five-minute chart is being green since 6.30 this morning, since 47.26. And, and green meaning the nine period moving the average. So have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great program. Check out my opening call. We just put in a, a, a stock we haven't touched for years today. We'll see if that's so far it's working out. But today is young. We'll see what happens by the end of the day. Have a great rest of the day.